What's up everybody, my name is Brandon, welcome back, and today we're going to talk about what the RSTI needs before we can actually get it on the dyno. Let's dive in. I should have known better. When I started looking at wheels and tires and interior pieces for the car, and realizing I was just gonna go down and get it retuned, that wasn't the case. So, if you remember from the last video, the RSTI needs a tune because the car is actually tuned for 93 octane, and I don't wanna run 91 with race gas. So I took it to a local tuner shop that's very well known in the industry in Southern California, and they went through the whole entire car and told me exactly what I needed to do to it before I can actually put it on the dyno. The first thing that the car needs, right off the bat, they said that it's running a Cobb access port version two. Now the version two is an older access port that as of 2018, December, they were gonna stop the support of this access port. So all the tuners I talked to on the phone and in person said you're gonna need to upgrade to a Cobb version three. And that's you know $700 that I didn't wanna have to spend because I already had the version two with the current tune on it. The number two thing that they said I needed is the fuel system needs upgrade. Right now it's running Bosch 1000cc fuel injectors and that wasn't gonna cut it. They said that they don't like those injectors. A lot of tuners don't like them. They've been known to have problems to not flow what they're supposed to flow and actually have some failure issues and that could cost you an engine. So they recommended getting injector dynamics um, or something you know, relevant over a thousand cc's for this power and if I ever wanted to run E85 that I'd have to get fuel injectors. So that is a Cobb access port version 3 that I have to get. That is a new set of injectors and also they wanted to know what the fuel pump was. Currently it's a Walbro fuel pump in there and i um, not sure what fuel filter it is. It's probably some older fuel filter. They wanted me to change the fuel filter, which is not a big deal. That's easy enough. You can get that at the part store or um, you know, Subaru for under $50 because it's actually in line under the hood. It's not in the tank. They wanted me to upgrade to a 300 DW fuel pump. So the, basically the, almost the whole entire fuel system has to be upgraded. Once we had the hood popped and we were looking around, uh, one of the technicians told me that you know it's really recommended to have the IAT relocated. Now what you do is you move the mass airflow sensor. There's a plug and harness that you can get and it relocates to an IAT, intake air temperature sensor, into the intake. So you actually put it at the, close to the intake as possible right at the front mount intercooler because without that, you're, you're reading the air intake temperature as it's coming in the air filter and you're not getting all of that intercooler cooling down from the front mount so you want to read it at the intake right before the throttle body. Alright guys so let me show you a little bit around what I was talking about relocating that uh, mass airflow sensor so as you can see the current mass airflow sensor is right here on the intake so what they do is you remove this and then there's a plug that plugs in then there's a cap that you can actually cap this off or you could just you know redo the intake if you want but I'd get a cap for that and then you plug it in here and then up here by the throttle body there is a hole down here it's hard to see you can't really tell it's actually capped off like I told you earlier that the meth was installed in so you weld the bung to the intercooler piping closest to the throttle body and um, it gives you better intake air temperature readings for when you're getting the car tuned. And they could also do a speed density tuning. There's actually a hybrid way of doing the tuning. I'm not sure if that's what we wanna go, but you actually utilize the mass airflow and an IAT in case the mass airflow sensor isn't big enough, uh, can't keep up with the, the power and the boost. You can actually update the mass airflow sensor or you can get a bigger one, newer one, you can run the stock one in, a in addition to the IAT relocating. Uh, so there's a couple of different things we can do. And we'll have to talk to the tuner about it uh, a little bit closer to when we're ready to go. Now the car also has a tile, teal wastegate that is uh, 
dumped to the atmosphere, which is really loud, and that's something they also recommended. If I wanted to change, I have to change it now. Um, if I want to reroute it back in and recirculate it into the exhaust, or if I want to get, they have little mufflers that you can buy, and it really quiets them down. I mean, if you've ever been in a car with an external wastegate, it is loud, and it smells, and it's just obnoxious. So I want to keep down the, I don't want to keep, have a lot of attention from this car. I want to keep it down. I want to try to keep it somewhat mellow. So they said, if you want to do that, do it now. They also noted that the external wastegate has a spring in it. Now, I didn't do that. I didn't install it. I don't know what the spring is set at, so I have to take the wastegate apart. I have to look at the spring and see what color is in there. That way they can know more or less what kind of boost the car is creating and if they need a different spring. Right down here, we have the external wastegate right there. And on the other side of the downpipe, you can see that other pipe coming off. And that is the dump tube from the wastegate and it is loud, it is dirty, and it is not enjoyable. One thing we did notice when it was up on the lift is we we're all poking around and you know the technicians were like, oh it's pretty clean, yeah everything looks good. And then we got up to the front of the car and they were like, well you got some oil leaks up here. And the car, I've never seen oil leaks in this car ever. Um, we, put, we, we started looking around with flashlights and he goes, oh yeah it's coming from the front timing cover. And granted, this engine, uh, the bu original builder said it had about 10,000 miles on it. And then the way he um, figured out those miles is this is the second set of tires he put on it. And he says he got about 10,000 out of the first set of tires. So he said about 10,000 miles on the build. And he had the timing belt, the water pump, the oil pump. Everything was changed out, all the pulleys, when he had the engine built. And it does have an aftermarket... Uh, oil pump in it, which these ones are rebuildable. I'm not sure what size it is. There's a couple different ones But they think that the oil pump is actually leaking or something up in the front timing cover So now they're saying you need you should do a timing build job water pump oil pump You should just get back in there and do everything before we do it And then we'll put it on a smoke machine when all this is done and see if there's any gaskets or anything else that's leaking. It's a little discouraging at this moment. You kind of think, do I sell the car? And you know, it only cost me $10,000 and now they're saying I need three, $4,000 in repairs. Um, should I do it myself? Do I have the time? Is it something that I could just drop it off at a shop and have it done in a week? Or you know, is it worth it? There's a lot of labor involved. They're, they're expensive, big jobs that um, you know, paying about $100 an hour, it adds up real quick. So these are the things I'm uh, considering right now. Do I sell the car or do I keep it? Not to mention once everything is done and updated, then you got to spend another, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars to get it tuned. So there's a lot of money that goes into these things. But you got to realize project cars, little fun weekend cars, they're not, you don't buy them because they're practical. You don't buy them because they're reliable. You buy them because they're fun and how they make you feel. And when you're driving down the road, it, almost nothing can relate to that experience. So, so stay tuned for the next episode. We are going to figure out what we're gonna do with the car. And uh, please comment down below. Let me know what you think we should do. Uh, like, subscribe, and then let me know what you think. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.